There you are, it's Capricorn. Welcome Capricorn to your Capricorn April 2021 reading and forecast. I'm Nigel St. James. As your subscribers know, great to see you back again. Love and affection to you always. It's always good to see you. And hi for those who are first time stopping by. Sit down, see what we subscribers and I do here. We have, uh, we have a great club here, don't we subscribers? It's different, it's good. Now, this deck you probably haven't seen before, actually. It was given to me by a, a former lover of mine well, before I had children, and it's a long, t long time ago. And she, um, well, she's a witch, uh, to put it in a nutshell. But she gave it to me uh, wrapped in, in rope. And the, 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 um, the tradition is when you give a deck of tarot cards to someone, you should wrap it in string or in rope. Not many people know that, but now you are in the know. Now that's a tradition which has been around by the mystics for many centuries. So now you are in the know as well. And anyway, she said to me that, look, this is a, oh, by the way, uh, some of the subscribers, I've had the great opportunity to, and we've had great fun. I've done some personal readings for some of you, haven't I? Clairvoyant readings that go for about an hour. And if you'd like to have a personal clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description box. And you can see how easy it is for that to happen from wherever you may be living in the world. But now let's get underway and we'll draw five cards. She told me that these uh, tarot cards were very difficult to read. And you know what? I spent a lot of time with them and I, th and, well now I, I know that they do actually speak to me, which is good. There's the two of pentacles. Um, it's a, it's a very esoteric system that the developer of this deck has used. Uh, really, in fact, so esoteric, in fact, that I really wonder where he got all the information from. Normally, it's the type of stuff that you see, you know, as, I mean, I've been doing this since I was a teenager, so, I mean, there's a, a lot of it I already know about. But uh, for someone to come to a cold, um, that's interesting. So maybe the developer was someone who's been doing it for, been doing this for a long time as well. Uh, what was I going to say? That was the night. That's the world. And so, so you got um, the the two of pentacles, the world, the knight of swords, the seven of swords, and let's get one to finalize, shall we? And here we go. And what is that? That's swords as well. That's the six of swords. Okay. Why don't you come and sit down next to me? We'll have a good look at the cards together. They'll speak to me, and I'll tell you what they have to say. Okay. I'm going to deal with this two of discs first or pentacles rather this is the lord of harmonious change now i'm going to deal with it because it's sitting above a card which has got to do with some self-doubts here some self-doubts which get resolved everything has turned out the self-doubts that you've had the course of your life has turned out for a reason and there's a great degree of action that you're taking to assist that to happen but let's have a look at this first card here shall we and see what it has to say for us. Um, Jupiter in Capricorn. Well, Jupiter in Capricorn. In fact, I'd say it's the first decan of Capricorn. Now, although this is potentially inharmonious because Jupiter is all about expansion, and let's face it, Capricorn, now you do have to admit that there is an undercurrent of conservatism within you, isn't there? Certainly a great degree of practicality. Well, there's potentially some inharmony there. But Jupiter, the planet symbolizing luck and expansion, indicates that change, harmonious change, will bring luck and is going to enrich your life. The new will bring more stability and security. And that's the Capricorn aspect with it. Change is always necessary when the old falls out of equilibrium. Change shakes us and wakes us up. Ah, the beautiful green color here, I think, shows that new energies will be drawn from the transformation. The only permanent thing you understand is impermanence, and the only certain thing in life 
is uncertainty. Now I have a real sense here that this is a time when, even though you may be feeling despondent, and I'll get to this card next, this is a time I think where you need to go with the flow in your life and trust in this process of change so that you might find harmony and balance. Now, constant changes in fortune can make things difficult to get off the ground, sure, but they do get off the ground if you continue with persistence. Now, there's nothing financially or materially set in stone at the moment, and there really is harmony within this suit of pentacles here. Now, there is a reminder here for you to make sure that you do have your day-to-day -day affairs in order. This is a card of good management of your practical affairs and your finances. Now, I know it sounds like a bit of a drag, but getting on top of bills and chores really is just as important as pursuing more enjoyable activities. Do you know, your life is subject to a constant change, and that allows you to grow, extending and expanding you, and ultimately enriching you. Give yourself up to this transformation with trust. What internal or external changes are going on in your life? Where are you still clinging? Say this to yourself, at this time, I trust in the harmony of my life and in the flow of my life. Every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. Well, let's have a look then, shall we now? Take it by the horns and look at this Lord of unstable effort, is what I call it. It is the moon in Aquarius. And I'd say the third decan of Aquarius, that is, you know each of the signs makes up 30 degree of the zodiac wheel. Well, each of the signs is also divided into three segments called decans. The first segment is the cardinal segment. The second segment, that 10 degrees to 20 degrees, is the fixed segment. And the third segment, or decan, 20 degrees to 30 degrees, is the mutable or changeable segment. And this is in the third decan of Aquarius, the 9th to the 18th of February. So we've got the moon in Aquarius here, do we? I see. Now, the emotions of the moon, well, they can really cloud the intellectual qualities of Aquarius within the card. Aquarius, therefore, is weakened, giving you a sense of, of lack of clarity. It's almost as if there may be a feeling, perhaps for a moment, of despondency or fear about what's going to happen, negative expectations. There's a number of swords here, and I, I could maybe make reference to this sense of lack of fearful expectation by making a reference to a planet for each of the swords. Neptune, everything seems to be clouded by a film or a veil. I just don't know what I really want. Venus, but it's just too good to be true. Mars, I haven't the energy, there's no time, or I'm already too old. Jupiter, that's too much good fortune at once. I could never cope with so much success. Mercury, I just can't communicate at problem. And then Saturn, it's simply too much trouble and it takes too long. Now these literally destructive thoughts, they don't need to be taken seriously by you. Don't pay any attention to them. The reality, and the reality as shown here, is really somewhat different from your present perception of it. Soon you'll be able to laugh over your doubts. You really will. So there is, I think, perhaps some self-doubt that makes it seem that difficulties are insurmountable at times. 
Your mind might be distracted at a time that you need to be focused. Now with the presence of the moon in the card here, it may be that there's subconscious doubts that dominate. Maybe so, maybe so. Well, what I'd say is that your fears really do have nothing to do with reality and they get sorted out as I'll get to in a second. Wake up and see what's really happening. In what areas of your life do you diminish yourself with your own limited ideas? What are your constricting belief systems? That's very important. Then say to yourself, I master all the skills and the means needed to achieve that for which I long for most deeply. And you see, you then pass on to the Lord of Earned Success. You see? So there's nothing to worry about. And these other cards here are even further putting that in place. The Lord of Earned Success. Well, this is Mercury ruling the second decan of Aquarius, 30th of January to the 9th of February. Now, the, the air planet of Mercury here, it finds itself in the fixed sign of air. You know, I was talking about those decans before. Well, the signs also have a cardinal, a fixed and a mutable sign. Aquarius is a fixed sign of air. The mutable sign of air, for example, coming after it would be Gemini. So Mercury finds itself in the fixed sign of air being Aquarius. But you know what? Mercury happens to be exalted in Aquarius, and that highlights the intellectual qualities of this card. Now, Aquarius is an air sign, which can be detached and intellectual by nature, and Mercury's ability to analyze brings a clear perspective to you going forward. The astrology suggests a somewhat detached but balanced assessment of a situation is needed. You need to analyze something without bias and without too much emotion in order to get the best result. Aquarius is also the sign of innovation and originality. And so it, it can also represent communicating in an ideas that are new, even unconventional, in really quite an ordinary way. The most varied ideas and visions meet at one central point, really, for you. Now, this allows for a new, all-encompassing vision of things which bring the rose of realization into bloom. You'll have mental clarity. You'll be using your intellect and logic. There could well be a journey. That journey may well be either physical or mental, possibly a relocation going on here, I have to say. I think that this intellectual clarity is going to come about through learning from difficult experiences, such as this process that you may be going through here, this experience in your mind. And you have grown through tough times and you now have a handle on life and can make intelligent decisions that are going to benefit your life. There's a greater level of awareness to your thinking and actions. Now, it may also mean that a situation that you haven't really been able to get to grips with is really now getting better. I think it is getting better. These things that you're concerned there, you're, you have now thought out and beginning to think out a better approach to dealing with the situation. So what can I say about it as well? Such other good cards coming here, you see. Look, you know, you possess the ability to perceive on different levels and from different perspectives. Your understanding of things unites many different aspects. Where are and what are the ruts in your life? Trust your insight. Communicate in a way that others are going to understand. That's the Mercury aspect of it and allow the rose within you to unfold and say to yourself the rose of recognition blossoms in my heart well let's have a look at the lord of winds and breezes before we finish with all the good news that's up here now let's have a look at the lord of winds and breezes there is there's a symbol here for 
for fire, and there's a symbol here for air, and there is a Hebrew, biblical Hebrew letter that's there at first. And I'll get to that in a second. I'll deal with this first. Now, fire and air, how do they get on with each other? They get on famously. They produce enormous amounts of things. People around here at the moment that you may well have things to do with are Gemini and Taurus. And the reason is, is because, and again, you have this great intellect going for you at the moment, because you have the energy of the mind in Gemini with the influence of the stability and determination of your sister earth sign, Taurus. It's the last decan of Taurus, I think, so that is the most unpredictable. Now, these court cards can, of course, be both male and female, but I'll refer to it as a man for the obvious reason. Now, this is someone who is active, clever, skillful, fierce and courageous, but often unreflective. He is the fiery aspect of air, so I think you will be now very goal-oriented after this period of being uh, sitting in a time of self-imposed misery. You'll have ambition and you'll have very flexible intellectual powers and a great deal of passion and a lot of what I call vehemence going on with you as well. Now this Hebrew letter here, that does that get into focus? Might be a bit difficult to see. It's a vertical line with like a little hook on it. Put it out having said that. Now, what's the best way for me to express how these things may best be understand, understood? Imagine the divinity. Well, that's very difficult to imagine. The, in fact, impossible to imagine the divinity. But let us, for example, take the metaphor of the divinity being just all-encompassing pure light in which all information ever, ever created, ever possible to be created, even information that it is not possible to create. All of that then, in order to make sense of it, can be, these Hebrew, biblical Hebrew letters can be used like a lens, like a projector through which part of that light can shine. And it will then produce, if you like, an image that we can then look at. Now this letter is called Vav, which is the sixth letter of the, the old biblical Hebrew alphabet. Vav is the power to unite everything that is separated in connection. Now literally, Vav means a hook or a peg. And as I said, it's a, a vertical line with a hook on it so you can tie things to it and then peg them up. The vertical line is representative of the extension of the creator's perfection into the created world in order to constantly direct it, guiding the cycle of existence step by step until eventually the oneness of the creator, which underlies all of creation, is revealed. Now, as the connector, this letter, this Vav, contains the power to connect heaven and earth. It can be considered as something like a hose or a tube which connects and bestows all the energy and abundance from above down to the created beings. Now, as the sixth letter, it represents the number six and the six days of the creation of the world in the book of Genesis, in the, the, uh, the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. In that first creation story, there are two creation stories, different creation stories in that first book in chapters one and two. And it also represents the six physical dimensions, right, left, front, back, up and down. Now the Vav, and here he is here with his knight on the horse, also is representative of the male phallus, the fertilizing agent, bringing life, abundance, continuity, and addition. Now for me, 
This guy here, he represents the idea of attack, of the violent power of motion applied. He is the wind, the storm, and his moral qualities are things like, which I think you'll have, skill, subtlety, cleverness. He is fierce, delicate at times, courageous, but can be altogether consumed by his current idea, which comes to him by way of inspiration and without necessarily having analytically thought it out. His strong intellectual determination is unified with a deep emotional perceptiveness. Only goals which are emotionally charged can kindle such passion, body, intellect, and spirit. They're all in harmony with him. So if it hasn't been made clear to you by this card, this card is now reinforcing it. That is that you will get a clear insight into a problem and you'll be working quickly to set goals without letting anything get in the way. This nevertheless could be, oh, something of a restless period for you where you are transitioning and trying to get somewhere else, either in your everyday life or again, possibly in travel. It's time though, for you to listen to your head rather than the heart. I get the idea that he is somebody who's more comfortable in his head rather than expressing feelings. Now I'm not saying that's you, but the message is, is that this is a time when you need to be analytical and logical about things. He indicates restlessness in all aspects of life. Maybe you want to break free from something in the workplace, or maybe you want to really get a project off the ground. Now in a relationship setting, you may hear of people who, who break up and then get back together, break up and get back together, break up and get back together until, I mean, it drives everybody else around them crazy until finally one or both of them are given crazy and one of them says, who signed up for this? I'm out. So you may well hear of that happening. But you are now in a good position to forge plans, to set goals and bring them to fruition. But the thing is this, do you actually know what your goal is? Do you have a step-by-step -step reasonable plan of achieving it slowly but surely? And what happens once you achieve it? Imagine how you will best be able to enjoy your success and say to yourself, I know my goal and I know what I am working towards. Each goal is just a milestone on the way to my ultimate destination. And then finally we turn to the great one of the night time. The world, as otherwise people call her. The reference here is to Saturn. And there's a biblical Hebrew letter there. And that letter there is Tav. And I might actually turn on to that now. The, the same comments as I said before about how to interpret Hebrew letters. Now, this is the last of the Hebrew letters in their alphabet, the biblical alphabet. It's the 22nd letter. The Tav is the last letter of the alphabet. Now, it means mark or sign or omen or seal. It is the symbol for truth, for perfection and for completion. It represents the restoration of all of existence. It is a return to the essence and purpose of your life. It represents completion before beginning again with the original oneness of the first letter of the alphabet, which is Aleph. This letter shows us that the end was set from the beginning it is the idea that the Creator set in motion all of existence, although there's free will involved in it as well, but set in motion all of existence in order to reach a final state of perfection, the fulfillment of creation. However, as soon as the Tav is reached, we begin again immediately by going back to the beginning, the one source of everything. The end is never really the end, but the beginning of something new. And of course, all the members of the Hindu 
audience will understand that. Now, this actually happens to be the last of the major arcana. It closes the circle which began with the fool. The great task has been brought to completion and returns to the innocence and uh, naivety of the fool. You are whirling, caught up in the perpetual dancing motion of the universe. You understand you are the universe, don't you? You are made up of the universe, all the molecules and things in you. And the universe is alive. You and everything else on this planet is living proof that the universe is alive. It's all a part of the universe. Now, in a mystical sense, the boundaries of your small eye dissolve in orgasmic union with the universe. But what does this mean for you? I think it means the completion of a project. Your efforts are finally paying off. Work that you have done, time that you have been putting things into, delays that you have suffered. Things are finally moving forward. It has been a long, hard haul, hasn't it? But you're now almost there. And this is a reminder for you to finish what you started. And you're learning to take control of your own destiny. The power of your will will get, get results. It is about the completion and the initiator, one who is gifted in simultaneously completing the old and starting the new, able to bring change into things, particularly into structured environments. I think you might be quite ecologically minded during this period, you know, and you'll have a desire to experience as much of the world and its people as possible. Now, maybe before the age of 21, there was a sexual block which needed cutting through, but that's happened. Now, I think that there is something ending and beginning at the same time. You could again have this desire to travel or maybe to study. Uh, or liberate a sexual reticence. It's now possible for you to see things as they really are. The stage is set for a new beginning or a favorable completion. The events in your life are in harmony with the universe. Say to yourself, I love to travel. I, I love to explore the unknown. I am excited about bringing ideas and creative projects into form. I deeply value making a contribution that makes the world a better place to live. I am one with the universe. That's it for you this month. Well, it was my pleasure and privilege to provide that reading for you. Isn't it interesting, you know, the things that come through with tarot cards? You know how one card can have so many things that it wants to get across to you. It's, uh, it never ceases to amaze me and I'm, 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 I'm confident that you will have enjoyed it as well. Look, and if you do enjoy it, please do me the favour and hit the like button. Apparently it does things for the YouTube gods and it would, it would help uh, more people see what we, what we ourselves enjoy. But listen. In the meantime, though, there's one thing that I want you to remember, and to remember it always, and that is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.